The reason we travel to a city may vary. Sometimes it's a song that gets stuck in your head. Maybe it's the chance to be exposed to a new environment. It could be the history or the aesthetic, or even a town's unique ability to feel like home no matter where we come from. I think for me, for many people that live here, living here is a statement. It's saying we appreciate diversity, we value diversity. It's the idea that we could experience something unique in any moment, whether it be in a park or on a stroll along the sidewalks that map out your town and not be separated by our differences. So what's it like to have this like so much history, kind of like small town. We have a lot of, you know, church history here, but we also just architectural history. What's it like to kind of have that mixing pot of history? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. There's a lot of history. And it's also like you say that the neighborhoods are, they seem big and far apart, but they're actually mm -hmm. close and you end up knowing a lot of people. It's a very, it's a very small, big city. Okay, so, so what's it like seeing this again? Wow, it's different. It's weird. It's out, it's different. We used to live in that building right thing with. Mm -hmm. And there actually used to be a brick wall in front of it. Really? So block your view? Yeah. Hi. Hi. I used to live over there. I guess you could say the reason we travel somewhere is the same reason we get excited to go in the first place. It's the adventure of something new. It's the anticipation of having another chapter to add to our story. The reason we travel may vary, but that feeling you get when you experience something new is actually happening to all of us, together. Our stories are more than a short stroll down the sidewalk. They are a ripple effect from the stories the town was built upon. My name is Mackenzie Cornell, and this is Sidewalk Stories. Before you visit a new place, you'll probably look it up. You might not like everything you find, but before the hardships turn you away, keep in mind that this place is a home to every single person living here. And because of that, when hardships happen, there's bound to be a person a lot like Susan, there to turn the moment into a lesson of change. Kennedy Heights Park is one of the Cincinnati parks. So it's part of that big system of parks across the entire city. Right. We're actually situated in Kennedy Heights, which is a uh, neighborhood of Cincinnati, but on our right is the neighborhood of Pleasant Ridge, and on our left is the neighborhood of Kennedy Heights. So it's a really beautiful park because you enter from two neighborhoods, but come together in the park as one. I love that. Yeah. No, I definitely have heard a lot from the locals that a lot of people move here for like the diversity. Mm -hmm. So like Kennedy Heights Park, this is actually very special because it wasn't always this way, right? So that's, kind of walk me correct. through that. Yeah. So I think what has always been th this way is the park mm -hmm. that you see here. This is a beautiful neighborhood park with old growth trees, um, sunshine like we have today. And it's kind of a hidden gem. Uh, to get to the park, you have to walk away from the street. You have to walk in probably about 50 to 75 yards just to get into the park. But the reason that we're here today is really because of violence that occurred in this park in the early summer of 2013. And so there was a vigil that was held on July 1st. It was held just across the street here at a meadow that is a part of the Cincinnati Recreation Center. And the vigil brought individuals from both neighborhoods. There were church leaders from both neighborhoods, the Kennedy Heights Community Council, the Pleasant Ridge Community Council. And there were over 200 neighbors who gathered together that night to just really have a peace vigil to honor the lives that had been lost and to think differently about how might we live differently. For playing the park and kind of why you got interested right. in this story. <laughs> kind of um, showed up. Yeah. yeah, and kind of showed up asking about this. Right. At the end of that vigil, um, I heard a little boy about nine years old who was really complaining. He was complaining to the people that he was with that his mother said that he couldn't come to the park anymore. He couldn't play in the park 
And what was he going to do all summer? Here it was. It was July. School had just been out for a couple of weeks. And he was really sad. I, it was what, what was going to happen to him. And that those words of that little boy just stuck with me when I left that night and over the next week. I kept thinking about how unequitable that was, how unfair that was, that a child who really just wanted to spend time outdoors in his neighborhood park, that his family weren't going to let him do that mm -hmm. because they didn't feel safe. But I do think that it's amazing because play in the park, it's not saying that our history didn't happen, it's saying that it did, yeah. but it brought us together. That's and right. So it was really special coming here and seeing everybody like interacting together and it's just funny especially me too like coming into an environment where no yeah. one knows me but uh -huh. I like to feel like I know everyone <laughs> yeah so it's just nice to be in a community where people accept you and yeah. they want to listen to you and I feel yeah. like that's very special so I did want to kind of transition to what it meant for you to be involved mm -hmm. here just from like your personal experiences growing yeah. up you know, yeah what were you drawn to yeah so the, it's it's a really good question to kind of go deep like what right. would make this matter to me right. so much yes. like why would I invest this mm -hmm. is a big investment for those Absolutely. of us I'm an active professional at Cincinnati Children's mm -hmm. I call this my summer volunteer job <laughs> <laughs> and which actually starts in February getting planning mm -hmm. but it's really just like the most yeah <laughs> yes but I I grew up uh, walking to a park as a child, I remember many, many times uh, walking to the park with my younger brother, the two of us barking, biking to the park, <laughs> being that. able to, it was a different age, right? Like it was, mm -hmm. it was great. 10 year olds and eight year olds could get on their bikes and right. bike to the park mm -hmm. and explore it. And we would sit in a beautiful park similar to this and have just really precious evenings. And I remember those times as very special, being with my mom because she wasn't busy at home, taking care of whatever mattered to keep a family with six children right. going. <laughs> but she was away from all that. And it seemed like such a special time for us to be together where we could just focus on being outdoors, enjoying music. So how would you describe the draw like the diversity has on you? Um, so our world is very diverse, right? And um, I think for me, for many people that live here, living here is a statement. It's saying we appreciate diversity, we value diversity, and we want to be in environments where we meet a lot of different people, people who are human, like us, um, like all of us are, but still individuals who bring really unique, diverse perspectives and life experiences to our neighborhoods. And do you feel like diversity is like kind of what helps Kennedy Heights stand out amongst all the neighborhoods? I do. I think that it's something that it, Kennedy Heights specifically has been known for being a highly diverse neighborhood for over 100 years and has done some very specific things to ensure that that diversity continues. Your GPS won't point you to people like Susan, unless you use the Waze app. In that case, someone else may have notated a spotting of her. But this way, even still, is not the best way to find Susan, or even someone like her. To truly find yourself submerged in the story of a town, sometimes all you have to do is take a walk through the park, or even an alleyway. You may be surprised just how many have taken this very same walk before you, and just how much these bricks and stones capture some of the most unforgettable moments of a person's life. Growing up in this neighborhood, it probably wasn't like the best neighborhood at the time. Mm -hmm. And I understand now as years went by, you know, things are changing and the community is coming around. Uh, but back then, I don't think it was necessarily big too... Big wheel environment. Yeah, it wasn't a big wheel environment. So when you came home from school, was there like one thing in the neighborhood that you were like, okay, I got to get out and do this? Or... Um, and what's crazy is when I was living here, the school that I attended was right on the corner of where I lived at. Oh, so it, honestly, we woke up in the morning, we walked there, we got there in about like two minutes, because that's how close it was. <laughs> two minutes flat, unless there's like some precipitation. Exactly. And, and then 
<laughs> so it was honestly like we were in the same community almost like I never left. So when we lived mm -hmm. here, like everything was here. My mom worked in this community. I went to school in this community. So I didn't realize that there was more than just downtown Cincinnati or over the Rhine in Cincinnati yeah. until we moved. And wow. then, I know, right? Yeah. Until I actually, no, until um, I guess I started going to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And once I started going to kindergarten, that was in a different neighborhood. So I'm like, wow. So what was that like for you to a kind whole of new have world. eyes? Up? Yeah, a whole new yeah, world. Yeah, right? Jacqueline. <laughs> it's like a whole new world. And then, um, do you feel like you had plenty of opportunity when you kind of looked around and saw everything that the, that the city had to offer you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, sometimes when I look back on it, had we stayed in this community the entire, my entire childhood, my adolescence, I don't know maybe if I would have had as much growth as I do now or uh, if I would have been through the different experiences that I've been through living in other neighborhoods and mm -hmm. taking from those experiences and learning and growing, if I would have stayed here, all I would have known was here. So what's special about Finley Market in this area of Cincinnati? Uh, what's special about it to me is that this is the first place I can ever remember living, right across the street. Uh, I remember coming to Flea Market every Saturday with my mom. This place, like my family grew up down here. Um, I probably was down here at least until I was about five, six years old. So mm -hmm. a lot of my early childhood moments happened here in these streets, in this neighborhood. I know it's been a few years since you've been in this neighborhood yes. specifically. Yeah. So you come here, is there anything that kind of catches your eye, reminds you of the past? I do remember my stepdad driving me around a lot at night because I wouldn't oh, be able yeah. to go to sleep. So downtown wow. with the lights and stuff, and he used to have like this beautiful drop top. So he used to just, he would drop the top and just ride us around until I fell asleep. So really? a lot of times I would see like a lot of the artwork and I would see the buildings and the lights. And then next thing you know, I'm just waking up in my bed the next morning, so. That, that's like a dream. It is. Of us. It I mean, is. some of us have to put the glow in the dark stars in our ceiling, <laughs> yeah. but you got the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really special. Do you feel like that kind of memory ties you to Cincinnati just that much more, like into the roots? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, even now, sometimes when I drive downtown and I'll have like my sunroof open, I'll look mm -hmm. up and it'll just be nostalgic and it'll just remind me of those times. So how would you say, like what, what was your thing that you looked forward to doing the most when you grew up here when you were a kid? One of the things I looked forward to the most uh, was going to the hub. Like I don't know if the hub okay. is still a thing now. Well, what is the hub? Okay, so Tell us. the hub was almost like what is considered the Boys and Girls Club today. So today okay. we have the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, back when I lived out here, it was a hub, and inside the hub there was a skate rink. Oh. So you can go in there, play pool, you can play all types of video games, but you can also go skating, so it was really fun. So every Friday and every weekend, I would look so forward to going to the hub to go skating. That's where I learned how to skate, and this would be like one sm I don't even know if it was a big circle, I can't remember. <laughs> I used to be skating around that thing so for hours. Was like miles when you were a kid? Yes, it was like <laughs> miles. I'm like, dang, how'd they fit this in this building? Okay, so let's go take a walk where you yes. grew up and where you called home and where you looked at the stars. Absolutely. <laughs> Yay. Really? So it blocked your view? Yeah. Hi. Hi. I used to live over there. You did. <laughs> I used to live there. Yeah. You're doing a video. Can we go inside? Living in Cincinnati. Living in Cincinnati. Hi. <laughs> and so, oh, this is the brick wall. Okay, so obviously oh, okay. it's not as big as I thought it used to be. No, so you were thinking it was like this colossal. I, when I was younger, China I thought this wall was huge. Like mm -hmm. this wall was taller. Of course it was taller than me. It was right. 
Oh, Gosh, no, but that does make sense though, because it probably was taller than you. Yes, it was. So, yeah. And right across here, okay, the balconies are still there. My mom's friend, Nisi, used to stay up here. She oh, had a wow. son named Markeith that I used to have like the biggest crush on. And they used to live right there, so every day we would come out, oh, and I was wow. like, come on, Keith, come out and play. Come out so, and play. That's so. so funny. It's so cool to be and here. And right beyond this bushel of trees and stuff is a preschool, which was the preschool that I went to. That was on you the corner. You literally came over, you hopped the wall, and then you hopped the fence, and then you were at preschool. <laughs> and then when school was over, I hopped that fence, and I went yeah. right over here to the hub. So this oh, wow. is still the same. I'm walking up on it, I didn't even think it was still open until I saw people right. walking out so of it. So this is the hub. So this is the place that yeah, you this come is the to place and meet with everybody. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. If I, if I walk in here and it looks exactly the same, I'm going to freak Shit. out. I knew it wasn't a dream. Like I knew, I knew this was real. And like being able to just come back and realize that this place was real. Mm -hmm. I haven't been back here in years. So to see that something that you believed in so much still exists here in Cincinnati. And how it's does amazing that, make you that they feel? still have this for communities like this. Mm -hmm. And that this place was able to like stand the test of time for kids who needed it. Because growing up in this community, you need somewhere to go to be safe and have fun. And this was that place for us. And I'm just happy to see that it's still here. So this is really neat. Mm -hmm. It's exactly, exactly the same way I remember it. All the way down to different colors on the windows. Like even that's exactly mm -hmm. the same. So it's really special like to be in here and you just think like the wood is the same, the brick yes. is the same. So every memory that you've had, you know, it's captured. So it's still here, you know? So you kind of wow. get to come back and that feeling still exists. Wow. Mm -hmm. So is there anything like to community kids who might watch this or want to get involved more with Cincinnati? Is there anything that you would tell them? That would be the most important thing to get involved, you know, because even like at school, getting involved in your community, getting involved in the people's lives around you, just getting involved in more than just yourself, it matters. And for the kids around here that that look to places like this for solitude. Like they even have boxing over there for young men to come to so they don't have to like, you know, be in the streets. Like cling to those places. Like for me, even whether it was this place or whether it was the Boys and Girls Club and mm -hmm. the other communities that I grew up in, I clung to those places because they have more than just, you know, spaces to be safe, to have people that you can learn from, mentors, guidance that can help you once you actually have to leave this place and go back to your real life and living in this community. Because a lot of times, even the Boys and Girls Club, I remember the times where it was time for me to go home. And I didn't want to. And, it, and it's places like this. It's places like this that help kids that grew up in neighborhoods like this. And I just, I'm just happy that places like this still exist, you know? Mm -hmm. And because you are sharing your sidewalk story, you know, they'll continue to. To be a kid growing up here in Cincinnati, Ohio, no matter what the year, was always unique. Like your town, there were places they went to stay entertained and to make memories that would be the standard they compared their next memories to. 
Every local story has a way of becoming an original. For Mark, his story with the 20th Century Theater began with an almost speeding ticket when he was 16 in front of a building he would someday own. In uh, 1983, the theater closed as a, as a functioning theater, and the community group, the Oakley Urban Redevelopment Corporation, bought it with the express intent of tearing it down. Mm -hmm. um, I had a restaurant across the street, and I just thought that that was a really stupid idea. <laughs> so I, mm -hmm. I joined the board, and we uh, uh, had recruited some people, and after a seven-year battle, we had enough people to uh, vote them out of office and take over the board. So a lot of communities try to revitalize buildings and sometimes it doesn't work out so great, but here it seemed to. It's very hard to figure out an economic model that works mm -hmm. for a space like this. And uh, I wish I could say I was smart enough to know what that was, but um, <laughs> I fumbled my way into weddings. And, and once I got there, I realized very quickly that this is, this is the mm -hmm. business that makes it work. Like many older buildings here in Cincinnati, the 20th Century Theater was reborn many times for varying uses. The journey of the theater began in August of 1941, when the 20th Century Fox production Blood and Sand hit its big screen for the first time. Not to mention, moviegoers were pretty at ease sitting in one of the first air-conditioned and fireproof buildings in Cincinnati, Ohio. The theater remained open for more than 40 years until it closed in 1983. Over the course of the next seven years, it sat empty, exposed to the elements, and falling to ruin. The Oakley community had a choice to make. They could save the theater or wipe the history clean from 3021 Madison Road. But in 1991, an entrepreneur by the name of Mike Belmont purchased the theater, bringing the building back to life one year after the buy, this time as Belmont's floor company. When Belmont moved locations, the building became home to the Cincinnati Church of Christ for the next four years. Then, on October 23, 1997, the historic theater became the centerpiece of Oakley once again, hosting concerts and private events. In 30 years since the lights went out in the theater for the first time, the tower of the 20th Century Theater lit up Oakley Square once again. So when you were younger, like a kid, did you ever walk by the theaters and think, oh, I'm going to own one someday? Like, what's uh, that like? I never, <laughs> thought, I never thought that, but on my 16th birthday, when I first got my driver's license, I got my first ticket out in front of the theater here. <laughs> really? <laughs> Leave, <laughs> leaving here. You should go outside and, like, get a picture yeah. of it. <laughs> I had, uh, well, I actually didn't get a ticket, but I mm -hmm. got pulled over for making an illegal left-hand turn after leaving the front of the theater. And, and How many people do you see do that today? <laughs> Probably um, a lot. Well, actually, the traffic patterns change, so it, mm. it, it can't happen now. So, oh, well, that's uh, good. Probably because of you. They were like, yeah. that one guy, we <laughs> really, learned. We need to change everything. Yeah. <laughs> Could so, happen. So what, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of stuff were you into like when you were younger? Did you grow up here in Cincinnati? Or? Uh, I came to Cincinnati in 66. So oh, I was okay. originally... Uh, Born in Chicago, and mm -hmm. fought my way out when I was six months old. Yeah. It was either join a gang or hit the street, so I was out. <laughs> and that and went to, to Detroit for a while, and then came to Cincinnati in '66, mm -hmm. uh, and I've been here ever since. So That's amazing. did a lot of growing up here and mm -hmm. a lot of not growing up here. What were movie theaters like in the '60s? So I know that was kind of a good time. For uh, them. Well, this was a state-of-the-art theater. Uh, by virtue of the art modern design, it had the best acoustics of any theater around, mm -hmm. uh, which is what really makes it work. Uh, in addition to the weddings today, is the I've had engineers from all over the world that have done shows here and talk about the just perfect acoustics here. Oh yeah, no, so, I can definitely tell. Like <laughs> it's funny if people can talk like across the room and it's like oh, right yeah, here. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. It kind of goes with the theme of the show. Like everybody can talk to anybody. People come in here and make obviously wedding. You're gonna remember well, that for the rest of your life. It's a tough job, but you know somebody's got a party for a living, so <laughs> might, as, might as well be. I mean, I'm sorry to me. take you from the party for yeah. this quick interview. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> so all good. you mentioned you got a speeding ticket out front, right? right? And like the 60s, well, it was an illegal left turn. Yes. So what front, were you? So. You were at the theater before you got the ticket. Right, so what right. were you? Were you on a date at the theater? Did you ever take dates? No, to it the was. Theater? Uh, um, I did later on. Yes. <laughs> oh wow. Yes. But uh, that night, it was just me and the boys out 
getting in trouble. Kind of so. like all these groomsmen here tonight. <laughs> yeah, they're they're actually yeah. pretty well behaved today. That's so. good. And yeah, that good good bunch of really mm -hmm. cool people. So when you came here with your boys or with your girls, <laughs> what was that like? What was the theater like to experience? Um, well, it was uh, it was the place. I mean, you know, you, you'd come to a movie here and there'd be four or five, six hundred people. The place wow. originally sat 950. Wow. So on a, on a really big show, room? it would, right. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> it would it would be a big crowd. And and, uh, and this is where, you know, I mean, I mean, all the major really cool films, you know, premiered here. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was the place to go. Mm -hmm. Was there any night in particular that you came to the theater that really sticks with you, with the experience? Um, had my uh, had my kids up here uh, with me one night, late nights. Uh, they were they opened the balcony just for uh, me and a couple of people I was with with our children, and mm -hmm. had them sleeping in the aisles watching really? Rocky Horror Picture Show. Wow, that's so <laughs> funny. How old were your children at the time? Were they? Oh, like one and a half, two. Wow, they were pretty little. No wonder they were sleeping point. in yeah, the balcony. Was, <laughs> well, at that point, we always had this stuff to bring with you to set them up, and mm -hmm. they were cool here. So yeah. Do you ever come in here when just no one else is here? And just kind of take it in for yourself? Um, I did that several times, you know, in the early years where mm -hmm. just set up and watch a movie and... That is so cool. You know, and that kind of stuff. I have to ask you about it because you talked about it a little bit earlier, but is the 20th century theater haunted? <laughs> um, I have a, a, a lot of people that will, that will tell you that and tell you a lot of stories. I have heard a lot uh, of stories. I've never had a conversation with a ghost mm -hmm. here. I've tried, but they have... They they're, they're, you're too to chill for yet. them. They well, and they haven't given me any trouble, so I figure they yeah. were. They must be accepting of what we're doing. They're just enjoying the um, show. <laughs> but I've had many people that have come in and, and recorded and and written. It's been written in a couple of books yeah. and, and that. And, Lots some stuff. And the the wildest I've had is that there's five ghosts that live here. Five. The, Very specific the, uh, number. Oh. Yeah. Well, they band of ghosts, band of brothers. These paranormal people <laughs> take this shit real seriously. Yeah. You know. They, <laughs> They well, do. It's impressive. They take it very seriously. Yeah. Uh, so there's been all kinds of things on that. So, I mean, you've walked mm -hmm. these sidewalks for, you know, since the 60s. So 40 years. What's yeah. it like to be here and to know that you have so much history here? I mean, that's a great amount of time. Well, you don't really think about that, you know. Mm -hmm. it, I, I never think about those kind of things. I, mm -hmm. I get up and I think about what... What do I need to do today? What's, yeah. what's, what's on my plate? Mm -hmm. And there's usually more than I can mm -hmm. get done in one day. And I just go from there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I never planned on, on doing the theater thing. I just mm -hmm. got involved because I was protecting my business across the street mm -hmm. and that. And then after, you know, uh, then this has worked out well. And then I ended up with the laundromat because it, I had mm -hmm. to, it was a defensive move. Your experiences here in the 20th Century Theater, and we kind of went over that, but is there anything else like you want to cover? Any special moments here that really are going to um, stick with you? We've had some really great moments. Uh, I had Harry Connick Jr. here, and this was a fun, fun mm -hmm. moment. Um, he was doing two shows, mm -hmm. and both of them were sold out at, at, at 500. Wow. And as you know, we when we got to the second show, um, you know, then my job was done. So I had just crashed out actually right here. Uh, and was going to watch the show, mm -hmm. and Harry starts playing and on stage and that, and then he noticed the, the mirrored balls that were hanging in the main room. Oh! Uh, and he says, "Hey, can we get those on and all this?" And yeah. and I didn't have them hooked up. Oh! Because we weren't doing that. We were doing a concert. Yeah. You know? we, we weren't doing dance club. So I don't know. It's I Harry had Connick other Jr. stuff, <laughs> other stuff hooked up. So yeah. I'm sitting down there, and Harry's talking from the stage, and he says, he says, you know. Uh, he says, how do we get these on? Who, who can get these on? And somebody in the crowd yelled out, Mark can get it on. <laughs> so he starts saying, Mark, Mark, are you here? I need these. I'm not singing until you get these lights on, Mark. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I just sat down. So I, so I go <laughs> down to the stage and I told mm -hmm. him, I said, it's going to take a second, but I'm yeah. going to get them on. Do you have any like unique experiences, like good unique, <laughs> from just walking down the sidewalks in Cincinnati? Like any just random encounters that really kind of touched you? Um, well, I've, I've had tons of great experiences here. There's so many wonderful people in mm -hmm. Cincinnati and that, and, uh, and that's something that I've found, you know, through the crowds that have come here for 
for mu different music events and everything. They're very gracious. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful people. They they love the music. They love to, you know, they love to let the musician know it mm -hmm. uh, and that. So it's it's really uh, been a very positive mm -hmm. uh, experience. And I, I lived obviously through that. So yeah, that's a funny story too. <laughs> So, but you did mention you come, do you always come and sit here when there's a show? Is this like your spot? Uh, well, if we're doing a show, then I'm working, so. Yeah, um, but if you have a chance, is this kind of like your go-to um, I've sat here with, uh, with a lot of cool people. When, like, do you ever go up near the stage and kind of look out at people who are taking in the show and kind of just to see their reactions? Is that ever something that you've done? Um, oh yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So what's it like when you see some, people coming here and having, you know, a moment like that. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. The purpose of having a sidewalk story is more than just having a story from within. It may not be the first place we think to find a story, but stories also exist within the walls around us. It's typically used for paranormal explanations, but the stone tape theory better explains why buildings and rooms can bring so much emotion to us. The theory says that some of the biggest moments of one's life are captured and stored in the bricks, the concrete, and the stones surrounding them in the moment when they happened. And throughout the years, these raw materials replay those moments over and over like a tape. In other words, the things we do, the moments that hold powerful meaning to us, have the power to evoke emotion in others who walk the sidewalks we walk and find comfort in the buildings we care for, for as long as they shall stand. So naturally, in a building that has stood for almost two centuries, it's hard to not find that powerful feeling filling your bones as you walk through it. All right, so we are on the roof of the old pump station. The old pump station. Here in Walnut Hills. <laughs> in Eden Park. In Eden Park, right? We're getting all the zip codes down too <laughs> while we're here. <laughs> but yes, I stumbled upon you because I wanted to make sidewalk stories and tell the stories of just the different neighborhoods around Cincinnati. And then you sent me this building and you were like, this is an amazing building, we need to shoot here. So what is your, your tie to the building? I tried to do a brewery here mm -hmm. with a couple partners. Um, and it was ultimately not successful, but we, we, you know, we were successful in raising all the money we needed mm -hmm. um, from the state and the city and the feds. And we're ready to get all the approvals we needed. And politically, for some reason, the mayor didn't want us to own the building. Mm -hmm. And not owning the building meant the bank didn't want to give us a loan, so. Right. The nice thing is, though, apart from like all the politics and everything you just come up here and you look out and you see the building it's a beautiful building it's an incredible yeah. building what is it about the building that kind of sticks out to you the most well it's, it's historically significant it's on the national register samuel hannaford designed it he designed the the, the little uh, water tower up there it's mm -hmm. a standpipe he designed city hall he designed music hall mm -hmm. um he's a very very yeah. Great local architect. It's funny because when you're not a local and you're kind of coming into the city, every place feels like it's so far away. But then you kind of take far. a moment. It's really not. No. All the neighborhoods blend together because right. we're in Walnut Hills right now, but Mount Adams is just right over across the shoulder. view. Yeah, just right over the shoulder. And of course, the um, you know Cincinnati Bengals Stadium. You drive by that kind of yeah. coming in. So what's it like to have this like? so much history kind of like small town we have a lot of you know church history here but we also just architectural history what's it like to kind of have that mixing pot of history yeah, I mean, it's, it's great there's a lot of history and it's also like you say that the neighborhoods are they seem big and far apart but they're actually mm -hmm. close and you end up knowing a lot of people i'm i'm involved with my community council and mm -hmm. you know we have interactions with other community councils but it's a very it's a very small big city i found that as much as every neighborhood is kind of blended together. So it's Cincinnati still, but every neighborhood kind of feels like its own little town almost too. Like, you know, Mount Adams feels very different to me than, you know, Oakley or Kennedy. Oh, they are. And they all have, they all have their own neighborhood yeah. associations and their own little local politics. So what brought you to Cincinnati then? Did want to come to school here? And uh, my dad brought city? me to Cincinnati. He, he took a transfer from Northeastern Ohio. And, mm -hmm. uh, we lived in Kenwood and um, I, first went to school at Denison University and mm -hmm. decided I wanted to be an architect. The show is kind of like sidewalk story. So I know since you ride your bike, you're probably on the sidewalk But I walk a lot. a lot. Yeah, so what's it like? Do you ever run into people that you know? Call that kind of home Walking, feeling? I run into people all the time. Riding my bike occasionally. Uh, 
the nice thing about being on a bike is you can still stop at a bus stop and say hi to people and yeah you know it's not like when you're driving a car you never say hi to somebody sitting at a bus stop no mm -hmm. so what's so you see the city i feel like from a totally different perspective yeah it's, it's slower yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good pace i feel like because you get to take it in so like i said it's a big mixing pot so going around do you feel like you kind of get to experience every neighborhood just that much more oh yeah and, really yeah, and, and you get to take different routes i mean Mm -hmm. They're all kind of slow because you're on a bike, so you don't have to take the fastest route. It's, it's yeah. interesting to go different ways all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is that? What kind of experience do you feel like that has on you? Kind of impact? Uh, it, it makes me want to stay. I mean, I know a lot of people, particularly young people, are leaving the city. I mean, mm -hmm. for job opportunities and things like that. Uh, it's pretty good. It's not the best. Yeah. Um, it, it saddens me when people leave to go someplace else. But mm -hmm. I guess with friends and neighborhoods I've established, yeah. Connections, just you know, I'm, you'd have to drag me out. So, what's it like <laughs> when you kind of ride around and take in, like you know, the sights of like your city? And oh, I, I love it. I mean, I, I like dry, I like riding around downtown and over the Rhine a lot. Because mm -hmm. again, you're going you're going at this kind of slow pace, but you're still moving, and you know, you, you can say hi to people and you recognize people you've ridden by before, and mm -hmm. they recognize you, and they, you know, some community develops out of that. I think that's kind of the gist of Cincinnati right there. You just kind of say hi to people and it's kind of about not having those barriers. Right. And you mentioned that riding your bike is different from obviously driving a car because you're more likely to say hi and wave right. to someone. And that's <laughs> important. I just keep getting taken. I am so taken by this this view over here. It's just amazing. That's Kentucky too, you know that. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. We're all here in Cincinnati admiring Kentucky. <laughs> that's good sister state. Mm -hmm. Chilling on a red light. All right, so today we're here at the Finley Market because what better way to learn about Cincinnati than to go straight to the locals and not just the locals but to the local food as well. So let's go ahead and go on it. <laughs> Avoid, try not to trip over the pole. main walkways of Finley Market. I'm going to try not to back into someone. I might make a few enemies. The opposite of what this project is trying to get me to do. I think it's really cool to look around and see what locals have to offer and the community come together. So we're going to go talk to a few girls who are here every weekend selling for their business and who experience the market to its fullest. So. But in the meantime, some nice ram heads. If anyone's feeling like a ram head, we have those. Loving the flag. Great flag. Thank you. <laughs> so I kind of just wanted to talk a little bit about Friendly Market. So you guys are here every weekend? We're here every Saturday and Sunday as long as the market is open during the summer market season, so through the end of September. I like that. What's it like kind of sitting out here and seeing locals come together, music come together? Well, it's amazing because we're right across from the beer garden and so we really see the best of both worlds with people yeah. enjoying local drinks mm -hmm. and local food. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will do their weekly shopping at the farm stand market with the local farmers and then they'll come enjoy a beer and some music. That'll be me the entire time. Beer <laughs> every station, beer me up. Yeah. <laughs> and we're seltzer. Well, we're seltzer, yeah. <laughs> There's so many market regulars, which is awesome too. Uh, it's not. You know, people obviously come to just visit maybe a couple times a summer, but there's so many people who bring their kids and families every single weekend. Right. It's really a staple. It's really special. Yeah. So like, and you're not from Cincinnati, but you've kind of involved yourself into the community. So what's it kind of like? What's the difference between Cincinnati and somewhere else? Well, um, so I'm from Las Vegas, and I definitely. Oh my God! That's <laughs> I didn't even know that. She was. Were you like a like one of the Madonnas walking around? I would try it maybe once. But. <laughs> so what's the difference between Cincinnati and Las Vegas? Well, Cincinnati, so just like a lot of uh, Midwestern cities, has a lot of history. Yeah. Um, it is very historically important for the pork industry. I heard you call it Porkopolis. Yes. Right here, which is <laughs> very true. That. Yeah. So that's true. No, that's, exactly. that's how we got the name Queen City. And so having that long-term history here, people have their roots, their families, their businesses. Their, yeah. their families may have been in the area for a couple hundred years. 
whereas some places like Las Vegas is just more transient, it's newer. Yeah. Um, you know, Cincinnati's great because we have really preserved a lot of the architecture in the area since the street right. was built. And we have been able to incorporate newer technologies like the streetcar yeah. to the awesome old historical OTR area. Can I pet your dog? Can he be on camera? Is that okay? Oh, sure. Okay. What's his name? Ginger. Hi, Ginger. Is it a he or a she? She. Okay. Hi, Ginger. Oh, she's nervous. Look at her. I know. She I'm so Ginger, you can see my little Hi, Ginger. Hi, Ginge. Look at camera. <laughs> it's funny. I think she knows, like, cameras. She always she gets camera shy. Don't need no woman like a shadow on the ground. who are of age, 21 and older, love our alcohol, but he actually takes a whole new meeting to on draft. So we're gonna go up to him. Hello, my friend! Hi, my friend. Hey. Hi. 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 Mackenzie, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah so we're just kind of wandering around Finley Market. I know you were mentioning to me that there's a Finley Kitchen. Yeah. So a lot of the community businesses kind of get together and yeah. help with that. Do you want to kind of expand on that yeah. a little bit? So Finley Kitchen allows uh, startups like us access to clean kitchen space uh, without having to have the big upfront capital expense of uh, building an industrial kitchen. So right. saves us a lot of money. If you got an idea, Cincinnati is a great place to, to come and start up a food business uh, with access to resources like that. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, Explain your business to me a little bit. I know it's on wheels. Yep. And then we were kind of joking around earlier that you <laughs> ride around and actually yep. Yep. grew as you go. Yeah, so we, um, we're a family owned business. We're based out of Cincinnati. Um, we sell everything out of a bike cart, so we're completely mobile. Okay. Um, we have our mobile food truck license, so we can pretty much go anywhere uh, yeah. we want to go. Um, we cold brew our coffee, it's 24 hours uh, brew time. We put it in kegs, we infuse it with nitrogen. It comes out of a tap like a Guinness does. It adds it. a creaminess to the coffee without adding cream. It's twice the amount of caffeine and 60% less acidic. Oh, okay. Oh, so you don't, so it's not alcohol. Coffee. Correct. It's just, okay. it's all coffee. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, he's like on tap. That's <laughs> yeah. good. Well, we, so we've got the coffee beans on the tap. So uh -huh. that's kind of something. That kind of gives it away. Yeah, you know, yeah. kind of like an identity crisis. People like come up and want a beer. It's like, well, we also, we have something better. We got something that can energize. And so, you know, we're, we're family owned. Uh, there's three of us that operate this company. Yeah. Um, I mean, we love it. Uh, we all um, we all can think back to our like original like whoa really getting into coffee experiences. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mine and my wife's was uh, on our honeymoon to Hawaii. First time I tried a really good cup of coffee, I went, hold on, there's something different out there. Yeah. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to give that kind of like whoa experience to people. Right. Um, so they know what a good cup of coffee is. There's a lot of other stuff out there besides yeah. the big. The big, uh, the big corporations that serve you coffee. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of other cooler stuff out there. And just get a lot of the flavor, a lot of unique things out oh, of yeah. coffee that you never knew existed. So mm -hmm. that's what we want to give people. Do you ever mispronounce anybody's name for coffee? Oops, sorry, you got a line behind us. <laughs> uh, no, we, you know, we, we're it's just kind Starbucks. of a, Yeah, no, yeah. We're, I mean, what's nice is like, we're immediate serves. So yeah. if you order, and I can pour right out. That's right, you know, no like, ma, like something crazy for yeah. your normal Mackenzie name. Yeah, I might That's misspell nice. your name on purpose. Yeah, which would be a nice touch. Yeah. Ring the bell. Yeah, 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 <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, well, I'll let you go. Okay. I've got a few people. It's great meeting you. Good to meet you. Good. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Have yeah, a great thanks. Day. You got our business card, right? I so do. You know, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, off we go. When you take in the sights of Cincinnati, you'll find a sense of purpose flowing through your veins. The banks welcome many to freedom. The stadium and ballpark lights engrave memories inside of families and friends from nights they will never forget. 
Growing up just up the road in Dayton, Ohio, every time I'd hop in the car and drive to Cincinnati, I had no doubt the city would always welcome me with a new adventure. As we film sidewalk stories, I realized this city is driven by one thing that encompasses all else, and that's the people. I listened as faces grew more familiar to me. And the heat couldn't stop my crew and I from climbing up a set of stairs onto a 90 plus degree rooftop. I realized this was more than a dream, more than a project. This was a calling that forever changed me. Maybe if you sat down with a stranger and just spoke about life for a while, you wouldn't be so surprised at the similarities you'll find between the two of you. For many, this is Cincinnati. This is home. But before the journey came to an end, there was one more group hiding within the woodworks of a more than 100 year old church that serviced the community built by one word. Welcome. Okay, we're good? Yay! Okay, so you can kind of just introduce me to the space we're in today. We are in Church of Our Savior in mm -hmm. Mount Auburn. Um, this church was built in the early 1800s mm -hmm. um, and it's had a lot of additions since then. It was actually built by a few people from Christ Church Cathedral downtown. They were the ones that came over here and decided they wanted to put a church in Mount Auburn, which also happens to be the most historic neighborhood in Cincinnati and the first one. And this church has been here since it was 1801. Just yeah, somewhere somewhere time. in there, yeah. Well, and I would say the location of the church is special, too, because I think a lot of people who come into Cincinnati and come in the area of Clifton, and even if they're coming to see the university or things like that, you probably wouldn't know that this was here. I mean, this is something that a local knows, but it's ironic because it's just a street away from all the action. Right, yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel like the location kind of interacts with its growing and development? I think that we're, that's, that's part of our music and arts program that we're developing is we want to really bring this community, this, this space back to the community mm -hmm. because we've sort of become our own thing and the church sees this building as a legacy that they're protecting not so much as their own church but as something that it's their mission to share with the community. What were like your first experiences here like that made you realize like I need to stay with this church, you know, and grow with it? Yeah, I was, so I, I first was approached sort of out of the blue to be this program administrator for the Music and Arts Center, and I thought it was just an amazing project and wanted to be a part of it. And then a few weeks later, I came here for a Sunday service to meet the congregation, meet everyone, so I wasn't just this face running this program for them that had no interaction with the church. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I had, I had been having a really rough day and sort of a rough weekend and mm -hmm. everyone, I mean, it, the, the, everyone hugged me when I came in the door, I didn't even know who I was. And they do some really cool things in worship that are really touching and that I don't see a lot of churches doing that I think are really unique to our service. Like when we do communion, the entire congregation comes up and stands around the altar and holds mm -hmm. hands for the duration of the communion service and it's all That's very amazing. it's all very community focused there's not mm -hmm. you don't just sit out in the pews the whole time people feel free to wander through church during service and wow. talk to people and that's amazing it's really cool <laughs> that is amazing. and it's really i mean it was it was mm -hmm. really you know i ended up crying like halfway through service mm -hmm. because just because of where i was at that point and in my day and in my mm -hmm. week and and how does that kind of heart of the church relate to the community as a whole? Um, it's, we, we sit in a very diverse community and this community is a bit different from some of the rest of the communities in Cincinnati. The average age of people here is lower. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much a split 50-50 between African American and Caucasian. We're, so we're a very diverse community within the center of Cincinnati really. So having this church here you get to understand a lot of where everyone is coming from and not just like a certain group of people right which I think yeah it's very reflective of the Cincinnati <laughs> yeah definitely it's mm -hmm. we are very much the the melting pot of this community I think <laughs> yeah. in a lot of ways right so we're working on opening the space more and we have we're now a bilingual congregation and have been for 20 years I want to say mm -hmm. So and why have, was the bilingual important for this church and the location that it's in? 
Um, that was that was a real drive for Mother Paula, and it's she is bilingual, so it's a service that she can give. All of mm-hmm. our services, our our later services, a totally bilingual service. Um, we bring in people that work with Transformation CDC, which I'm sure she will talk to you about when you talk to her. <laughs> um, but there, we we bring in immigrants that don't have a church home, that don't have a place to go, and we provide something for them that feels comfortable and feels more like the services they're used to. As I listened to Sarah speak so highly of this historic place of worship, it made me realize that though the walls and ceilings were beautiful and compelling to witness, they wouldn't stand today without the love and devotion from others holding them up. I wanted to understand the church through the point of view of its translator. So we took a walk from the sidewalk, of course, through the red front doors, to one of Cincinnati's biggest hidden gems. So beautiful. So first steps into the church. Can you remember your first steps coming into the church? Oh my goodness. <laughs> 1990. Oh wow. Yeah. What was that like when you first came in here? And- saw and felt everything. Well, I think initially, like most of the people I've ever met who walk in for the first mm-hmm. time, I was overwhelmed by how beautiful it is. Right. Even though it looked a little different, there was an old 60s green carpet oh, on yeah. the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Very welcoming considerably carpet. improved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, and, and there were just like these straight lines of pews, pews. Oh, kind wow. of boxed in. Mm-hmm. So it, it a little tight. <laughs> yeah, space. it was a little tight and a little less in the round feeling. Mm-hmm. But still, the you, you're just drawn oh, up. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. So I think that has actually played on the consciousness of the worshiping mm-hmm. community here, that they have this sense of breadth and inclusiveness. The other thing is that where some churches with a high vaulted ceiling like this keep just going straight up to Mm -hmm. a high peak. Um, This is gently rounded. Yeah. And it it sort of brings you back down to the earth. Mm -hmm. And I think of that as on earth is in heaven in the world's Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. This congregation has had this consciousness of whatever our aspirations are, whatever we pray for, we're still supposed to do something about it on the ground. Right, yeah, because that's beautiful. I noticed that the ceiling, so the ground isn't perfect, but the ceiling is just beautiful to look at. So like, how can we bring them here? We, whatever we aspire to, we don't just leave it up there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We have to do something. Right. Uh, We have a commitment as a community. And so uh, it's, it's been a congregation since its founding that has been very much at work Mm-hmm. in the community, in the world, oh, yeah. to try to make the world a better mm-hmm. place. Tell me a little bit about how this church came about and its purpose here in the community. Well, the, the, the church was actually built in 1881. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lived down the street in that house that was built in 1874. Oh, okay. Um, this was the first suburb. Mm-hmm. Um, people moved up here originally, people used, that had money. Mm-hmm. Moved up here to escape the the, the over the Rhine and the coal <laughs> and the coal smoke. And I can say people probably still do that. <laughs> air, well, they, they made sort of the, the flow is the other direction now, and now was escaping back to the over the Rhine. I know. But the yeah. air pollution was was a uh, uh, when they heated the whole area with uh, coal fired fireplaces. The, the air pollution downtown was horrible. Oh yeah. And people came up here to escape that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why there's a Mount Healthy um, uh, originally. <laughs> That's, that was funny because I people, saw that. And I was right. like, wow, like, what could this People fled, mean? fled there to avoid uh, disease and, and so forth. Wow. And this, but this was the first neighborhood where that was, mm-hmm. that was the primary driver. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, this was a Samuel Hannaford building. Hannaford does uh, the architect that did Music Hall, mm-hmm. uh, did City Hall. Uh, right. So he was the, the, the architect buildings. here. And yeah, it's a gorgeous building. Yeah. Um, and, and it is basically untouched, untouched since uh, probably 18, 1900. You come in here and you can just feel everybody that's came here, like uh-huh. whether it was to find themselves or to celebrate others. Mm-hmm. And that's just a really powerful feeling. It so is. to you, I'm sure you're in here almost every day. Pretty much. What's that like when you're welcomed by that feeling? You're not alone. Um, and, and that sense of a, 
a community of faithfulness, a community of, of hope, a community of love, a community that strives for justice and mm -hmm. that cares what happens is really essential, I think, in a, especially in hard times. Well, that's what's special about the church and especially this neighborhood is, like you said, the diversity is there. It's apparent, you know, you live with it for years and years and years. So it's cool to see people of all ages come here and yeah. find a place here. And it sort of supports the hopes of everyone. Right. We're also feeding seniors down here five days a week downstairs now at noon, five days a week for free. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, Cincinnati Area Senior Services operates that program and we're hoping to integrate the, the seniors in the building and during through the day and, and the recital the recitalists that are up here mm -hmm. uh, some days mm -hmm. to, and to do other performances where the neighbor, where elderly people in the neighborhood that are in here that are bussed in here by, by Cincinnati Area Senior Services mm -hmm. can enjoy the programming that we're putting on here. Well, what's it like to lead a service and to look out and see people? Oh, you know, it is capturing. exhilarating for me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing I'd rather do. Uh, to see a congregation of, of people who are here because they want to be here, they want to be with each other, and it's bilingual, it's multiracial, multi-ethnic, multicultural, people from every kind of cultural and social history and economic uh, experience uh, people who have walked across the desert mm -hmm. looking over their shoulder in fear of their lives, people who are making great sacrifices to help those people with their uh, asylum petition mm -hmm. um, and their children, uh, you know, yeah, just all of these people are here. Mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam vets who yeah. are still struggling with PTSD and recovery issues. Mm -hmm. They're all here together. And when it's time for communion, they stand in this big circle around the altar here. Mm -hmm. And they join hands and offer the same prayer in different languages. Mm -hmm. and. It is a world transforming moment. <laughs> it's like a moment where no matter where you come from, you yeah. know, you're all standing together here. So do you feel like this sort of moment could serve as like a motif to Cincinnati as a whole? Do you oh see yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's like the revolutionary vanguard <laughs> of the reign of God on earth is in heaven. Uh, it's, it's what we would aspire for the world to be and it's already happening. What do you feel like about this church and its history keeps bringing people in the way that it does? Well, I think it's partly, it's it's almost more the neighborhood than the church. Mm -hmm. the, this is a neighborhood that's done good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a neighborhood full of people that have been open-hearted like a small town for a long time. The driver is the people that are in the neighborhood. They're looking for, for uh, or venues, uh, vehicles that they can use to do what they would do anyway. So did you grow up in Cincinnati or are you from Cincinnati or what kind of brought you here? Um, I grew up a couple hours north of here in a tiny little cow town called Minster. Oh, um, actually have not heard of that. <laughs> most people haven't. It's very rare for me. Most people, if anything, have seen it as an exit on, on I-75. What I was it the about last... the city that kept bringing you back? Um, aside from my family, I just, I, I really think this is a cool city and it's kind of underrated. It's, there's a lot going on here and there's a lot to do and there are a lot of really cool things to be involved in here. But it's also just a very arts focused city and there's a whole heck of a lot going on in the arts here that I don't see in other cities. This is a really music and art and theater and focused everything. area. It's, there's a lot of opportunity for growth here. The reason you travel to Cincinnati may vary. Maybe it's because of a song you can't get out of your head. Maybe it's the chance to be exposed to this big, small town. Maybe it's the history or the aesthetic, or maybe even it's Cincinnati's ability to feel like home, no matter where you come from. I've had tons of great experiences here. There's so many wonderful people. As much as I love Cincinnati and it gave me that strength to follow my dreams and that courage, I knew that I had to find more. 
outside of Cincinnati, but all the time I'm still going to come back home. The neighborhoods of Cincinnati, the 52 neighborhoods here, have a, are powerfully independent of each other. Uh, that's unique. And it's, uh, and it's part of what makes this a magic place to be. The chapters of our stories that are written here are more than just a short stroll down a sidewalk. They're forever built in the foundation of the city. When, when something happens in your life or in the lives of people around you, you know, if you feel like you need to respond, take that, take that risk, step out, um, follow your dream, follow your passion. When you walk down the street, the sidewalk. <laughs> what do you feel when you're in this community? I, you know, I feel like I'm at home. It's, it's really, I've kind of always felt that way anywhere in Cincinnati, really. I have traveled a lot. I've never, you know, other than going to college for a couple years away, I've never lived anywhere else, but I've been everywhere. And it's a pretty good place to come home to. It's, it's, uh, it always feels good. And we realize that whatever our stories have been, we do have, we can weave them together into a common story and we can celebrate it together just as surely as that circle on Sunday morning discovers that we have a, a common story that we can celebrate. And that's what, it, what I hope for. So maybe that's why we travel, to make our stories mean a little something more every time we do. My name is Mackenzie Cornell and this is Sidewalk Stories.